As a financially educated person, your goal should be to build wealth, not to own a home, because your wealth can help buy you many homes. And in order for that to work, you have to have a system of knowing how to spend your money. What every wealthy person does is they know that when they make a dollar, how much of this dollar can be spent, how much of this dollar has to be invested, and how much of this dollar can be saved. And a simple way to do this is to follow something like my 75, 15, 10 plan, which says for every dollar that you earn from here on out, 75 cents is the maximum that you can spend. 15 cents is the minimum that you invest and 10 cents is the minimum that you save. Now, when you do this, every time you get paid, whether it's $1 or $100,000, you're always saving some money, investing some money, and then spending some. Now, the reason why I'm bringing up this financial system as we're talking about how to own a home the right way is because your home is an expense. Your housing costs are expenses, which means they have to fit right here within your budget, which means all the housing costs that I just showed you, your mortgage, your property tax, taxes, your insurance, your upgrades, and your maintenance, all of these things have to fit here and still have money left over to pay for your food, to pay for your cars, to pay for your vacations, and all the other expenses. And you still have money left over to invest and you still have money left over to save. Now, I already know what you're thinking as I say this, because every time I say this, I get the same comments. You say, well, just but I'm already struggling as it is. How in the world do you expect me to live off with just 75% of every dollar that I earn? Here's the reality. If you want to build wealth, because the whole goal of my financial education is for you to build wealth. If you want to build wealth, the way that you do that is you make money, you don't spend all your money and you have money to invest. That's how wealth is built. You have to own investments. You have to own assets. Every single wealthy person in the world is wealthy because they own assets and not because they make a lot of money from the job. So now if you want to become wealthy, that means you have to own assets. And if you want to own assets, you need money in order to do that. And if you need money in order to own assets, you can't spend all your money on your mortgage. So you got to make that decision. Now, what's more important to you? Is it a big home or is it owning your investments? I'll let you decide. And this brings me to point number two, which is that your home is an expense not an investment. The mistake that so many people make is they assume that if I'm making a mortgage payment, I am building equity. So this money that I'm paying into my mortgage is part of my investments. And that is a huge, huge, huge lie. Did I say it's huge? As somebody who's been investing in real estate for more than a decade now, what I can tell you is that home prices go up and home prices go down. Rental prices go up and yes, rental prices go down as well. No wealthy person, truly wealthy person in the history of mankind has talked about how I became wealthy because I bought a home and then I paid it off. They talk about how I became wealthy because I invested my money into stocks. I invested my money into rental properties. I invested my money into my business. I invested my money into other businesses. That's where wealth is built not through just owning a home. Now, owning a home is not a bad thing, but you have to understand that owning your home is not an investment. Owning your home is an expense. And I understand that creates a lot of emotion and a lot of controversy. And I get this because I am also a licensed realtor. I don't work as one anymore, but as a licensed realtor and as a banker, what are you told? You're told that these homes that your clients are buying, it is the biggest investment of their life. And guess what? If it's the biggest investment of your life, it's a little bit easier to buy a little bit bigger, a little bit nicer, because if you can pay it off, you can pass it down to the next generation and build this, this generational wealth through home ownership. But what it actually does is it signs a bigger commission check to people like me, your realtor or your banker. And then you are left with the mortgage payments. And if you can't make the mortgage payments, well, now you are sacrificing your investments. That way you have more money in order to pay your mortgage. You're also sacrificing your savings. That way you have more money to pay your mortgage, which is what ends up happening to so many people is they have this big home, but no real wealth. And now you might say, well, just but at least I'm building equity into my home because every time I make a mortgage payment, I'm paying off some of my mortgage and I'm building this freedom through my equity. But the reality here is, if you get a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, banks front load your mortgages. What that means is for the first 14 years of your mortgage, more than half of your mortgage payment is going to go directly into your banker's pockets with interest. And if you don't believe me, I'll show you. If you get a $500,000 mortgage for 30 years at a 7% interest rate in year one, you're going to pay $40,000 in mortgage payments. And out of that $40,000, about $5,000 are going to go to pay off your principal, just $5,079 versus the other 34,000 
$839 that you pay are going directly into your bankers' pockets with interest. It isn't until year 21 of your mortgage that more than half of your mortgage payments are going to pay off equity as opposed to going into your bankers' pockets with interest. By the way, for all of you money nerds out there that like to keep up with what's happening in the housing market, my team at Briefs Media publishes a free newsletter called Market Briefs, which is a report on what's happening in the economy, things like housing, stocks, crypto, the global economy, and our own economy into a fun, witty, and easy to read newsletter. You can read it in less than five minutes every morning and it's completely free. So if you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, I got the link for you down in the description below. This is why I want you to treat your housing payments like an expense instead of like an investment because the bigger home is making your realtor richer and it's making your banker richer, but it's an expense for you. Again, I'm not against you buying a nice home. I'm not against you buying a luxury home. I want you to own a big, grand, beautiful mansion. I just want you to be able to afford it first because so many people are going deep into debt to buy these big grand homes thinking that it's an investment for them, but it's really an investment for their bank that's making the banker richer instead of you. If you enjoyed this clip and you want to continue your financial education journey, I have another video that I think you'll love. All you got to do is click that button right over there. And for those of you who want to stay up to date on the top finance and business news, you can join Market Briefs, my free financial newsletter, by clicking that button below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.